Hey, hey, this is the Sounds on Vinyl show, the only show on the internet, in the world, in the universe that will make your fucking ears bleed. This week, we've got the news. We've got some really expensive fucking vinyl, according to Mike, which is going to be fun. We'll be right back. <laughs> What is going on? My name is Phil Boyer, as always, from across the vast open sea where the Vikings once ruled, is my brother from another mother, Professor Rockstar Extraordinaire, Mr. Mike Svensson. Mike, lead singer of all bands, past, present, and future. What the fuck is going on in this brand new year? It's 2023. Can you fucking believe it? It's 2023. Motherfucker. (laughs) <laughs> That's all I had to say. I mean, <laughs> shit. Already? Fuck. Already. We're only getting younger, aren't we? That's true. Yeah. Or, I mean, I... That, that is yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't I mean, believe it. I, yeah. I mean, I mean, a couple of years ago, we're sitting here. We couldn't go outside because of COVID. We couldn't go to shows. We couldn't go to theaters or movies or, or whatever. And I couldn't play shows with my bands. And all of a sudden, fuck me, here we are, like three years later, and we're still here, and Mm -hmm. we have to deal with this shit every day. So (laughs) I'm thinking we're digging deep into music this year, even deeper. We're going deep, deep, deep on the cover. We're going deep, bitches. (laughs) (laughs) I always wanted to say that. Well, uh, since you know, uh, this year, 2020. 23 it's hard to say what the fuck i know it is yeah it's the special in english what the fuck yeah. i have to i have to learn english at, at some point fuck doing a well, how do you how do you english. say it in swedish say it in swedish sugar sugar tray sugar tray okay yeah you see okay well there you go there you go, there there, you go. there's your swedish lesson for the uh for the year so far <laughs> <laughs> and if so you know swedish yeah. Sorry. Tough <laughs> shit. Yeah. And if <laughs> and if there is an English teacher out there who can teach me to 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 speak proper English, uh, please let me know. Hook me up on DM or something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where where to go from this. But but still, I'm I'm thinking that 2023 is a year where you um are going to see a lot of changes on on the Sons of Vinyl podcast. Uh, me and Phil have some tricks up our sleeves, and and if you have followed the show, you know I've uh, made my one of my dreams come true. I'm opening up a record shop, a real live one, where you have to visit me. So it's called the Sons of Vinyl Record Store. It's going to open up uh, during the fall. So. Uh, Pay close attention to this podcast. There's a lot of cool shit coming up. Yeah. Well, to uh, I mean, it, we're talking about vinyl records on this show called Sounds and Vinyl, of course. And there's a lot of stuff that I've been doing, buying up uh, uh, stacks of vinyl records for, for the shop. And I came across uh, some pretty expensive records. Uh, records that i actually didn't know that they were that expensive because mm. there's a lot of stuff that's been going on with with price settings and so forth the last year i've been mm. told so wow. i had in in the ballpark i i i, I knew that they they were expensive so when i went on discog and I asked some friends i i was shocked actually so mm. the first one I'm going to show you here, um, even though, well, let's not go there. I, I'm just going to show it and, and the reaction from Phil. Well, you know. This is a band called Songgarden. And this is that. Uh, yeah, I know. This there, is the, there, there is no garden of sound. Oh, like when, when I think of a sound garden, uh, this yeah. is not what I think of. No. But uh, all the other normal people out there, I don't know. <laughs> this is the the album called Bad Motor Finger from 1991. 
There's a lot of good stuff on this record. But nowadays, you'll have to pay uh, between $100 up till $200 for this What one. What the fuck? For that? Yeah. Yeah. For that? Yeah, you see? Jeez. Wow. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, why? It can't be for the music, so why? Is it limited ah, run or what? Come on, man. You see? <laughs> And the other one, uh, who the, this is actually an album that you really like. Uh, and also a shocker for me when it comes to price setting. Oh, Queen's Rice. Yes. Operation Operation Mind Crime, also great from record. 1988. It's a great record. I I agree, but this one between fifty and hundred dollars. Okay, I, that I can see. That I can going, see. Going going back like three four years, you can easily find this one for like twenty thirty dollars, easily. Easily. Mm. At the lowest, it's $50. I think the highest, it's over $100. So between $50 and mm. $100, just to make sure that we're on, on, on the right track. But Now, the, these prices that you're quoting, are they for original pressings or yes. just? Yes. No. Okay. All right. Are so these original. are for originals. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Regardless, regardless of country? Uh, or like we're yeah. talking you, for in the case of Queens like US, right? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, there's uh between like let's say ten to thirty dollars. Um, okay. This is a, a European pressing. Okay. Uh, mostly of the the stuff that I I'm going to show here is European pressings. Otherwise, I will say it's a, a it's a US pressing. Uh, so, uh, but there is not a big difference between these bands when it comes to, to, uh, pressings from different countries. We, we uh, should do an episode on, on, on that record. We've never done we, Queensryche on the show. Oh, no, we haven't. Fuck no, we hell. haven't. No. And, and that, oh, that and record, I... especially that, that, that's a great, the warning. Well, the, the EP, the warning and this one are my three favorite from Queensryche. Oh, so, yeah, cool. So yeah, I oh, think we, and I, we, I got we, some... we need to talk about this one. Oh yeah, and I got some stories about Jeff Tate <laughs> and, okay, his cool. wife, and his wife and his wife and, and uh -oh. their manager. Oh, oh, okay. Good stuff. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Stay and, tuned. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and this one, uh, I, I don't know if you know them. It's a Swedish band from Gothenburg called Evergrey. Uh, it seems familiar. Yeah. They, But I'm going to have to say no. Yeah. They've been around for uh, uh, quite some time. Uh, pretty popular here in Sweden. Been touring the world. And this one, it's called uh, Hymns for the Broken. Uh, actually, hmm. shit my pants. Uh, between 150 to like... Two fifty, three hundred dollars. It's only been uh, printing in like uh, uh, a couple of hundred. Uh, okay, so copies. it's a limited run. Yeah, so it's a why. limited. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, uh, and this this actually is from like two thousand and thirteen, I think. Mm. No, fourteen. So, uh, and in it, and I said, "Wow, what the fuck? It's it's a new record, but but still." The amount of money, jeez, and but it's 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 like a friend of mine who is also a collector said, it's only worth this if people pay the money. True, so the very true. price settings are are really hard to do, and and determine the value of stuff. Uh, I mean, for me, uh, a Japanese pressing from from um, uh, uh, Kiss. Um, in the early 70s means more to me as a as a as a person that it uh, than it does for you uh, because it's a sentimental value for me so it's right. it's it's really hard to to know what's 
what, what records are worth. But but um, on the other hand, it's it's always fun to go on Discogs and and talk to people about the value of of records nowadays. And and well, people are paying a shitload of money for records these days, and it's mm-hmm. a new generation also. And and they are discovering vinyl records um, in a way that you and I, I, I mean, we took stuff for granted growing up because it was cassette tapes and vinyl records and seven yeah. inch, and seven inch singles. That that's it. We didn't have CDs, we didn't have uh, streaming, we didn't have uh, iPods and 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 that uh, and and whatnot. So we had to to rely on the physical format and 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 whatnot so uh people i mean kids nowadays they tend to pay uh well steep prices for for vinyl records so i don't know yeah. i i think it's a bit much i uh, i'm yeah. a, i'm a sheepskate when it comes to to stuff like that I, I, <laughs> but but it's it's hard when when you paid like when you have a like a a, a a Kiss album from from the early seventies, let's say Destroyer, and and you normally pay around like twenty 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 five dollars for for that, and and nowadays you have to pay between forty and sixty for the same album. And backtracking like five six years ago, it's I mean it's a it's a hundred percent. An increase when when it comes to 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 the price settings to, today. So it's 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 nuts. But hey, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I, you're, you're you're one of those dudes that I think if you were rich, you'd be like, you know how Jay Leno has like this like he's got like a thousand different kinds of cars and stuff. Like he collects these cars and has like this garage full of cars. I think you mm-hmm. would have a garage full of vinyl records. Oh yeah. That would be oh, you yeah. if you were oh, rich we- and had that kind of money and you'd Without be spending the, the $500,000 on these <laughs> records and shit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I, and that's why I, I, I am starting a record store so I can well, look at a lot of albums. There you go. There Both you go. at and, home and, and in the shop. Yeah. And get a discount on records, right? Oh, Buy yeah. Sale and then you get a discount. You get them cheap. Oh, man. There you go. All right. So that's it. That's it. That's what you got, man. That's, yeah. that's some crazy shit. It is. That's some crazy is, shit. All right. Let's talk about you. You mentioned um, some of these older bands like Kiss. We'll, we'll talk about Kiss here in, in a little bit. But. Mm-hmm. We've been talking about some of these, um, you know, like, should these bands give it up, like Def Leppard and Motley Crue and and all that? Mm-hmm. I think the definitive answer is absolutely fucking not. If you judge based on they were the most profitable tours in 2022. Yeah. Right? So yeah. um, Def Leppard and Motley Crue tour made $173 million across 35 shows. Holy crap. Guns N' Roses, 93 million across 27 shows. Now, you compare that to legendary Rolling Stones, 179 million across only 20 shows. Mm -hmm. So, Maiden, 76 million across 47 shows. It took them 47 shows to get. 76 million. I, I find that really tough to believe, man. That's just mm-hmm. crazy to me that it took that many shows. Mm-hmm. And then, are you a fan of TSO? No. I'll take that as a no. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take yes. that as a no. <laughs> uh, well, they made, uh, I can't read that, 54 million. I'm getting old and my eyes are shit. 54 million across 98 oh. shows. Man. See, what I love about TSO is you got all these metalheads, right? You got, it's basically started <clears throat> from Sabotage, the band Sabotage, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And where I live, you've got all these religious nut jobs, right? Metal is bad. It's the devil. It's this, it's that. Mm-hmm. But they'll go and like spend 200 bucks on a freaking TSO ticket, mm-hmm. you know? And it's like, you understand what you're listening to? You're listening to the devil's music, right? Okay. We won't go there. <laughs> But 
but there you go. So yeah, that, that's some of the most profitable tours in 2022. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what 2023 brings. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of, so, a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. So, but, but it, it, it's, it's crazy that you say, uh, I'm, I mean, we've been talking on and off about this. It should, these bands call it quits or, or, or what, but, but it's, I mean, the vast majority of people that, that goes to these shows, I mean, they, they're, they're, I mean, they're spending their money and they want this. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm guessing, but I mean, now I, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking to doing this like the, the personal way, but now, okay, people are happy. Let's leave it at, at that. But I, I have an opinion, but, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. No, you I, know, it's, it's, it, it's, you know, I, I think um, the, the number one grossing band, tour wise was i don't know if it's it's a person or if it's a band called bad bunny or something like that oh and i don't remember the exact number but it was somewhere in the neighborhood of 373 million or something like that that they made oh Damn. i'm like that's insane that's insane. never heard of them. i've never heard of this and for them to make you know that much on a tour is just crazy and then bad but, but, bunny bad bunny i think Damn. yeah I don't know. That's a I shitty know, band man. name. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. It is. I don't it know. Is. But it's, it it's I don't know. It, it, it's interesting, though, that you've got some of these older bands, though, like Crew and, and Def Leppard. I mean, I know Def Leppard's still putting out music, but. Um, yeah. Well, if you want to call it music. Um, oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> But but that that they're still able to rake up the dough. And what was interesting is on, on this article that I read, Metallica wasn't on it. Oh, so I don't know if they were just really low. I didn't. I, there was a full list that I didn't. I, I read, but when I was preparing for the show, I didn't go back to it. Um, so I don't know where Metallica was on that list. But I gotta imagine they were pretty high on that list. Mm -hmm. So oh, oh, uh, they have to be. I don't know. They have but, to be. But it's yeah. But that, but anyway. Crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Now, speaking of older bands, um, did you see the post that Mickey D did uh, to to celebrate Lemmy? Uh, on on, I mean, it's like seven years since he passed. I know. I uh, can't believe it's seven years no. already. Jesus. Oh, it, it, it's it's nuts. And in in even though that he's uh, touring with the Scorpions at the moment, there is a, he there was a whole story. That that he wrote, it, it was really sentimental to read. But but it's, I mean, for I mean, since like the early '90s up until Lamb passed away, like seven years ago, he was a member of Motorhead, and he's a big part of his life. And he did a a, a very very nice celebration to to Lemmy, and it, it was really really cool to see. Uh, and it's, um, I mean, I think the, the, the quote was at, at the end, don't, don't cry over your beer, drink it or something like that <laughs> <laughs> and Love signed it. Lemmy. So, so, um, I mean, we should celebrate people like that. And I think that, that Mickey did a, a, a really nice thing to remember, mm. uh, Lemmy. I mean, <clears throat> we, we, me and my son uh, the other day, we, we spoke about this and, and, um, all the big bands that he, he's discovering uh, has a chance to see at the moment. I mean, he's seen Kiss already, Alice Cooper, uh, Maiden, uh, Saxon. He wants to see Judas Priest. We're going to see Metallica next year. And so forth, and 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 as I, I told him, uh, we should do this now because we we don't know when when they are calling it quits for good. Uh, I, we went to see Kiss um, uh, last year, and and said this is this is it, this the end of the road. It's no more Kiss after this. And Maybe 
Maybe. Maybe. Teaser. Yeah. yeah. Teaser. Teaser. I've got a Teaser, story yeah. about. I've got yeah. a story about that. Oh yeah, <clears throat> but it's. Uh, I'm afraid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but it's. Uh, so uh, we talked about this. So who's up? Who's next? With the arena bands, and I couldn't figure it out. I I really couldn't figure it out when when Guns N' Roses, uh, Metallica, Maiden. Well, those are like the biggest names right now. The Flipper, mm -hmm. well, at at some point, Motley Crue has been away for for a couple of years, but. When when they call it quits for good, who's gonna? Who's next? There is nobody. There is no. No, and I mean no. Some somebody said Bad Bunny. Oh no! <laughs> I don't know, man. Somebody I... said the the Foo Fighters, but but that that's not hard rock or metal, because I'm I'm thinking only hard rock and metal at the moment. I mean, where are the if... Foo Fighters even still technically a band? I mean. We've not yeah, really yeah. heard anything about that. No. You know, I know Dave Grohl's been doing some stuff, his, his Hanukkah shows, but is mm -hmm. there... Well, I, I know? don't know. But but there there's a band that's playing arenas. Mm-hmm. But I don't I know. I think it's, it's pop. It's all pop. It's Taylor Swift. It's whatever i don't even know i couldn't even tell you i i, no, I, I just no. run from that stuff so much i couldn't even give you tell you no, any um, band but, in, but is there any any younger metal bands at the size of maiden and and, and metallica or or at least on their way to becoming the next big thing as much as i hate to say it i think ghost has a oh. chance to get there. Oh yeah, I forgot about those. Um, I don't like them. I don't like them at all. I, I like a couple songs, but for the most part, yeah, I'm with you. This this last record, I don't even know what the fuck it was, but um, yeah, I think they're they've got a yeah. shot. I think you still they got a shot. Yeah. You know, but I think if I'm if I'm thinking like no, I, th there's really nobody of that caliber that's no. coming up behind. The Metallicas, Priest Maidens, all these, yeah. It's crazy mm -mm. to think about. Yeah, I think Foo Fighters could replace U2 in that yeah. alternative rock. But even, I mean, yeah. th those guys aren't aren't that young either, though, for being honest. You know, Dave so. Dave is born in 69, so he, he's like two years older than me. Yeah. So, I mean, he's... So. he's yeah, got another twenty kidding. years, I guess. If yeah, you know. um, so I don't know, man. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, it, it's it's an interesting concept. It's an interesting thing to think about because, you know, I, I've said this. I you know, I haven't been shy about saying you know, music for me pretty much died in the in the nineties. The mm -hmm. all the the legends that we had kind of went away. And were replaced by the Sound Gardens and the Nirvana and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and and those bands weren't. Say what you want to like, you can like Sound Garden and Nirvana, but they weren't the same caliber as a Priest or a Maiden or a Led Zeppelin or a Sabbath, right? You you can have good music, but not be of that caliber. Mm. If you if you know what I'm saying. Right. Yeah, <clears throat> but uh, I mean, we we see see that in in you and I have a different opinion about those bands because uh, I'm not necessarily thinking that they are the best thing. I think they were necessary for for the next thing. It, it's sort of like uh, when punk rock hit the streets. Uh, in, in in the seventies, some a, a sort of like because I remember seeing Nirvana. We talked about this, seeing Nirvana on, on on MTV and thinking, "Holy fuck, that's the end of the of the of the the poodle rock era, the hair metal bands." <laughs> so so that I was happy about that, and yeah, all, all of a sudden there was more aggressive music coming on the scene with with all the death metal stuff that came out 
that, that, that I was thrilled about. So I think that's um, sort of like putting an end to all those poisons, Britney Fox, uh, I, whatnot. They, it had to be. Um, would it? Would I be more happy if it was an uh, another punk rock revolution? Of course, punk rock music is is uh, way cooler. But but it was necessary to make a statement that said, enough of this Hollywood crap. We need to go back to the music, to the roots, guitar, drums, and a bass guitar, and, and, uh, and somebody who sings. Enough of the keyboards, enough of the glamour, enough of the, the other crap that has no part of it, says I, who likes Kiss. But you know what I mean. So... To take that into the next thing for, I mean, say what you will about the music that came afterwards, but all of a sudden Slayer was relevant again in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. They were making music and people like Entombed and and Napalm Death and, and... at the gates and and whatnot, they looked up to people like Slayer and 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 those kinds of, of bands. So there, it, it was another. It fueled itself, I think. So it it was a necessary evil for you, and I think it's it, it was a good thing. <laughs> so if you know what I mean, if you know what I mean. So, but I, I agree to you at, at 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 some extent. I agree with you, but but it's. I could see that coming. It has had to stop. I mean, the Bon Jovis of arenas that, I mean, they sold fucking hell a lot of tickets and it, it's a show and it's, I don't know. I don't know about that, but yeah. it's, well, well, give it to it, me. It, it, it is what it is, man. It, it is. is what it is. I don't know. Yes. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes, but yeah, you know, I, I, I think, we can the ultimate blame i think is on the record labels by not oh, yeah. giving artists oh, yeah. the 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 freedom to do you know to to be the next bowie or zeppelin or sabbath or mm-hmm. whatever you know even the eagles yeah. to a certain extent right i mean the we 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 just we don't have that that luxury because they need to sell because they're not selling anything anyway and so they they need to maximize whatever they can sell that they, they need oh, yeah. to sign artists that they feel they can sell instead of looking at going, this is, this is awesome music and let's make mm. this happen and let's kick some oh, yeah. ass and yeah. let's, you know, let's do this stuff. And it's just not happening. No, you should watch the documentary about sound city, the re- the record studio that, uh, that uh, came out in, in the, in the, in the seventies and, and have re- recorded, I mean, Rage Against the Machine, Nirvana, uh, Fleetwood Mac, Stevie Nicks, Tom Petty. You should watch that documentary on the analog recording. And there's a uh, um, when we, when they went into to the dig- digital recording, uh, and that this studio wouldn't have anything to do with the digital sound, the Pro Tools <laughs> and and the whatnot. They stayed analog, and and Dave Grohl he bought that whole console, and yeah, put it up yeah, in I saw studio. that. Yeah, yeah. When and, um, and, when uh, uh, the dude from ACDC, um, I can only yeah, think Brian of Johnson. Brian Johnson. When when yeah. he, he did that van tour thing that he's oh, been doing, yeah. Yeah. and he went and hooked up with Dave Grohl, and they yeah. went to the studio and showed that. Yeah. That was fucking yeah. epic, man. Yeah. I'm looking the, at that the, going. I wouldn't even know what the hell to do with that. No. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a there's a, a thing in, in there that there's a quote that I, that I need to address. There's a woman working in the Sun City studio. It wasn't the fanciest studio ever. There was something about the the, the atmosphere in there in there that made bands do all this great stuff. And and she said, if you're not recording analog. You're not a real man. 
Ooh. And this comes from a woman. <laughs> and, and, and I just froze and I, I, and I was alone watching this thing. Did anybody hear this? And I had to rewind and say, what the fuck? So, but that's, uh, and she was wow. sad and disappointed because she has been working there for like 30 years or something like that. And I understand I had the, the, the privilege to, to, to be able to record on, on those reels, th those big reels on, 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 on analog tape and mm -hmm. ha have the, the, the producer go like this, wh wh where you see them cutting the tape by hand it's 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 fucking insane i i remember when we started recording digitally and i thinking uh well should shouldn't we be in the room playing together oh that, that's a new thing you, you don't have to okay so we're recording separately and and we will cut it up so it, it's going to be good and it's it's still mind blowing today that we can still do this, but we yeah. we don't have to pay for expensive uh, studio time anymore. We have our own studio and we can do whatever fucking we want whenever we want. So without paying uh, a shitload of money for it, but I'm I'm just glad that I I've been able to have the f fortunate to to be in recording on analog tape. So. So watch that if you if you haven't people out there if you haven't watched that Sound City documentary, do it. It's it's fucking do it. insane. Do it now. Make it happen. Yes. What else? Well, well, we were talking about Iron Maiden earlier. Oh yeah. And a and a couple of guys that you know or have met. Oh yeah, I'm scared right now. Yes, it it is Paul Diano. It... Paul oh, Diano yeah. and Gus G got together mm. in um oh, I'm drawing a blank on the country Greece got together in Greece on stage and Gus mm -hmm. G played guitar and they played all the classics off the first two Maiden records oh yeah and actually it sounded pretty fucking good mm. it wasn't bad <laughs> If you're not watching I, the video, like the look on Mike's face is like, oh. I have to say this. I I I was thinking that you weren't going gonna uh, uh, go with Kiss first, but I actually watched this uh, just minutes before we 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 started recording this. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I mean. It's Paul Diano, and it's I'm I'm lost for words. Uh, I I don't know what to say. The dude is sitting in a wheelchair, front and center stage, singing all those tunes. But he's out there doing it, though, man. He's out there doing it. I mean, yeah, it's not the best option, but he's out there doing it. Yeah, I mean, and it's got to be tough to sing. Sitting in a wheelchair too, right? I mm -hmm. mean, just the mechanics of singing. Mm -hmm. You know, are you, you hearing yourself speak. right now? He's sitting in a wheelchair. Yeah, he isn't? I mean, well, you don't think he should be out there in a wheelchair? I don't think he should be out there at all. Oh, I, I don't know. Oh. I mean, if oh. you're not able to walk on your two feet up to wouldn't it be time to call it quits? You know, okay, I, I think I, that I, depends. I think mm -hmm. that depends because I could I could say that, you know, when Dave Grohl broke his leg in the middle of the concert that you were oh, at, he should have gone. Oh, that's not the same thing. But it, it kind of is. He went out there for the fans, and f the fans wanted to see that, and, and he went yeah. out there. And honestly, was was he? did he sound as good as he did back in the day? Hell no. Fuck no. Not many singers do. But he didn't sound that bad. I didn't no. think he sounded. There was some notes he couldn't. He tried to hit and couldn't. Do, do you know why he's but, in a wheelchair, Pollyanna? Yeah, because he's all fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, he's all fucked he, up. He's all fucked uh, up. On his own on his own accord too. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he he, yeah. he did it to himself. Oh yeah. And 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 he admits that. He, you know, he he yeah. he's he's not 
you know, he, he's he's done some things that are, are less than respectable, we could say. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I, I don't know the guy. I've never met him. I don't know how he is as a person. I know he's done some things that mm-hmm. I don't approve of and, and you know, but. I, I met him a couple of times. He's a, he's a nice dude. He is a really nice dude, but but it's um, well, well I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I met Blaze Bailey too, and he's even nicer, but but it's I don't know, I don't know. But he's kind of like a whiny little bitch, kind of like Wh- Dave Mustaine when it comes to Motley Crue and all that. Who? Oh no, never mind, never mind. Yeah, don't don't. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking of. Uh, Somebody else. Never mind. Okay. All right. Never mind. So, Never mind. Ignore me. Okay. Ignore me. Okay. Okay. Rip the band aid off with Kiss. Why don't you? Come on, man. Kiss? Well, Kiss is going to be around forever and ah. ever and ever and ever. Fucking So, it. you know, we've heard the rumblings. Gene Simmons has made, has made comments about, you know, it's not out of the possibility that, you know, other people could become Kiss. Right. And and people are like, well, no. And then most recently, Paul Stanley basically said, yeah, yeah, they can. Let me try to see if I can find the quote here. Oh, come Um, on. um, Kiss is like an army or a sports team. When the MVP is no longer playing or retired, the team doesn't call it quits on a battlefield. An army, when they lose soldiers, doesn't wave the white flag. Somebody else picks up the weapon and runs forward. So in one form or another, I believe there will always be a kiss. Oh, you're killing me right now. Fucking hell. Hey, that's kiss. Oh, That's Paul Stanley right there. Oh, yeah, I know. You know, know, so Kiss will be around forever. So this may be the end of the road for the current lineup of of Kiss. The article did say something about you know maybe this is this this version of Kiss will be done and then it'll reinvent itself for another round and it'll just keep going and go on forever and ever and ever and ever and yes, yes. I don't know. No. I don't know. Me neither. Uh, you would think that I have an opinion about this. You think that, but no, I I I'm lost for words. I've they've been talking about this for a couple a couple of years, doing auditions with younger musicians taking their place. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I mean, in the at the end of the road, and now they're coming back to Europe again. And people are going, oh, you should see them again. No, I had my goodbye. It was emotional. I said farewell. Not anymore. Fuck it. Leave me alone for crying out loud. Let me have this moment. It was a beautiful moment. They played like one of the best shows I've ever seen in the somewhat 20 shows that I've seen with Kiss. And it's. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. So so if they do reinvent themselves, let's say in, in like five years, a new kiss, four new members, right? Paul, Gene, all those guys, they're, they're no longer part of the band. It's, it's four new guys. Would mm-hmm. you give it a chance? No. 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 Ooh, okay. A chance, maybe. But I, I would like close one of my eyes and, and, and cover my... <laughs> and, and do it like this if you're watching YouTube right now. I would do like this. And uh, maybe. Maybe. Just maybe. Take a, take a sneak peek. Yeah. But that's not Kiss. Kiss for me is something else. I mean, I'm still stuck in 1973. Right before they, they, they uh, uh, it all broke for them. Uh, they, they went. I, I mean, it's. It's. I'm so fascinated about when they became Kiss, when they were still roaming the streets of New York City, and still played at Tennis Twenty Third Street, where rehearsal space were, and 
the first album, Hotter Than Hell, the first tour, the second tour, Up to Kiss Alive. I mean, my God, that's Kiss for me. Mm-hmm. It it really is. I mean, I, I'm so happy about all the other albums that they did in, in the 70s, but but the other stuff, it's, I mean, I love them till death. I mean, I still collect the 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 old stuff and and i i keep my ear to the ground when it when it comes to to everything else that that has to do with with the band but it's no enough is enough i i had my goodbye in 2022 i'm so happy i'm so thankful for all the music but that's it that's it that was yeah. the end of the road for me See, I, I don't agree with Paul Stanley. I don't think it's like a sports team or an army because it's you, – you've got – with sports, you've – almost anybody could be trained to do a certain kind of sport, right? Mm-hmm. I, I guess you could argue to a certain extent the same thing for music. But I, I do feel like with music, there are certain musicians – um, that just like Eddie Van Halen and Jimi Hendrix, they just had a way with the guitar that nobody else yeah. did. There, sure, there are. Jimmy Page is a great guitarist, but he's no Jimi Hendrix, right? So I feel like it, it's a bit different. And and when you've got, you know, a sports team is like twenty some odd players, right? Depending on the the sport, you've you've you, you're talking about a band that's anywhere between four and six you know, members that that's a very tight knit and there's a certain talent that all meshes together in a certain Mm. way to create that kind of thing. It's also very creative. Sports isn't creative. An army is not creative. It's, you know, music is a very creative thing. There's a lot of stuff that has to come together to build a song Mm. um, and a lot of talent from a lot of different directions to create that music. And so I, I don't I don't think it's the same thing. And I don't think you get four different guys in there. It's not going to be the same band. It's going to be it, – it, it might be good. It might be awesome. It might be the next arena band that we were trying to find earlier. But I don't think you could call that KISS because it's not no. the same energy. It's not the same thing, right? Yeah. And maybe it's be- because, I mean, maybe I'm afraid – I I don't know, but but it's I'm I'm. Well, it's too much. It's it's too <laughs> fucking weird to think about. It's too fucking weird to think about. Yeah. So, uh, but but you mentioned so I'm I I'm calling this to to a, a halt. I call it quits, and and moving on to you said Van Halen and and. It makes me really happy, say what you will, but still today, Van Halen and, and Eddie Van Halen's music and his DNA is still alive in his son. I mean, Wolfgang Van Halen, I mean, have you heard this dude play guitar talking about Eddie Van Halen? I mean, he's got, I mean, a massive amount on his shoulders to to come up with a, a near his father but he's he's doing a great job he is he's a really skilled guitar player and he writes all his music by himself plays all the instruments and now all of a sudden people are thinking that he is selfish i mean to read the headlines about he has to defend himself for, for doing it all. I mean, mm-hmm. it's it's crazy to think. I mean, if you're watching that that tribute to to Taylor Hawkins, uh, the Foo Fighters drummer, former, uh, he played some of the, the the Van Halen stuff. I mean, he's a real musician. And and I'm so happy that that he's out there doing this because, like you said, we need people to 
to conduct their instruments in a proper way, to have that feel where, they, where there's a drum, there's a bass guitar, there's a, a, a guitar player, and there's a singer if, if if the or if the guitar player sings i i don't care but but it's 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 meat and potatoes mhm mm uh there was a friend of mine who who records stuff and he said you're a, you're a meat and potato guy you you <laughs> want it simple you want it straight on and hell yeah i want it straight on uh i'm ha i had a hard time listening to to stuff that 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 it's too much samples and too much all over the place w w with with faders and and all that kind of shit i i wanted the the real stuff where you you go into a room together and 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 you count to count to four and, and then you fucking let it rip and 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 you sweat there for a couple of hours in in the rehearsal space and and then you you look at one another and you think whoa this is fucking the greatest thing ever man and to to be able to to see Wolfgang Van Halen play together with Dave and, and the rest of the band I mean uh, Taylor Hawkins was such a, a a huge Van Halen fan and to be able to to see to Wolfgang do, doing those Van Halen songs uh, it's it brought a tear to my eye I, have you seen it no Oh, it's it's great. Mm -hmm. it's, I tried listening to some of that stuff. Um, was it Mammoth EVH or whatever it's called? Yeah, yeah. and I just I couldn't I, I couldn't no. get through it. So okay. no, well, I'm I, so I I I know I I haven't listened that much to it, but but I think that it's it's he knows his stuff, and I'm happy about that. Uh, he 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 can really write some songs and and and. And and play the instruments, and he's a really decent singer too. So um, I'm just happy about about that. So well, there you go. Yeah, there you go. You got get something else. I got one last thing, and yep. it's not it's not on a positive note. I'm afraid. To oh, because because we we sort of talked about this. Um, I think it might have been the last show of last year or the one before it. We were talking. You it brought up um, Aerosmith. And oh. uh, Steven Tyler, you know, having to cancel all their shows in, in mm -hmm. Vegas and stuff like that. And, you know, are we beginning to see the end of that era, you know, and Ozzy, you know, we, we, his tour keeps getting canceled and he basically came out and said, he just can't fucking walk anymore. Mm. And, you know, so he does, he's not sure when or if he'll be able to tour. He says that his mind is there and his creativity is there, that he can still write and sing and stuff like that, but he just can't get up on stage anymore. So I fear that we're seeing the end of, of Ozzy. Yeah. I, but, I, I think that's been in the works for like a couple of years. I, I didn't yeah, yeah, really I think, think so that too. he was coming back uh well it's it's sad but but it's understandable the dude's up there and uh, honest to god like i said this before it's amazing that dude is even still yeah. alive yeah and, i mean say what you want about the last couple of records he's put out i mean the fact that he's still putting out music that's oh, still yeah. better than some of the newer bands coming up oh yeah and his condition is just insane to me it is it is i mean this last record wasn't bad at all no no, 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 but it's he, well. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a it's moment a for. Well, let's take a moment for Aussie. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm done. <laughs> and I also heard Geezer Butler's got pneumonia too, and at oh, that shit. age, pneumonia is not no that good of news. So I don't know. I don't know. I man. don't know. I, I I fear we're we're at that age where we are seeing the end of an era mm -hmm. come to a close, and yeah. It's I not good. So too. But let's oh. pick this shit up, man. We got music. Yeah. We got, we got, we got music. fucking music this week. So so th this is uh another Swedish band, of course. Uh since I'm 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 do doing all this. <laughs> but it but it's it's this is great because we have um uh we have the Onos on. Uh 
uh, friends of ours, uh, a great fucking punk rock band, all girl band. Uh, and this is another one. And <laughs> I just want to, you, you should pronounce, you, you should say the band name. It's, it's in Swedish and, and we've been talking, Phil and I, how, how the fuck do we do this? Do we do it in English or in Swedish? And we, both of it, I think. So you go ahead and, and you, you start. <laughs> Because you, uh, you 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 only said you you saw the band name and, and in <clears throat> this is what you came up with. Yeah, Urarta. Urarta. I think that's cool. In in Swedish, it's Urarta. Uh, okay. And this is uh, also an all girl band from from Malmo, Sweden, where I'm located. And this is a really really cool uh, band. It's sort of like a mix between punk rock music and, and sort of like alternative it and with some goth feel to it. It's, it's all over the place, but still they're kicking ass and taking mm -hmm. names. Um, they, I um, I think they, um, they started a lot, only a couple of years ago. I, I can't remember when they, when they started out, but, but it's, uh, they played a couple of shows, they're going to do a, a release party for, and and this is, we've been talking about this, releasing full-length albums. It, it's what was common when you and I were growing up. We couldn't wait to, to get the next Maiden album, a full-length mm -hmm. album. Uh, of course, we bought some, some seven-inch singles just to, to, keep keep it like like fresh and real but i i don't know two songs you had to flip that one over you get tired of that but but nowadays to be current in in all this noise if white noise of all the bands that are releasing music left and right you have to do something different so singles is it's what's up these days if mm -hmm. if you wanna if you're a mid range band and and you want to stay current, release singles. That's that's the new thing. But listen to this, Ulrata. They made it even, I mean, quite different, but still with singles. Releasing a new single every Friday during two months. Every every Friday you get a new single from this band for for two months, and and then they are having a release party on on January twentieth to celebrate all these songs that that they released. Isn't that a cool thing? I love it. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah. different, and and it keeps them current. Everybody is talking about them. Uh, they're on social media and. It, it, and whatnot, they're uh, getting interviewed in, in podcasts and so forth because it's a different way to see, to, to release music. Uh, and and it's, it's, it's all in good fun, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. and, 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 well, I don't know what to say anymore. I mean, to be able to still release music like this band does, an all-girl band, and kick the living shit out of you doing so. <laughs> uh, I mean, we have to play this song. It's called Orbit from Phil. What's, <laughs> what's... I can't pronounce it like you do. Urarta. <laughs> Urarta. Or Urarta. Here is Urarta. Orbit <laughs> on Sons and Vinyl Podcast. <laughs> Let's go. Let it rip. <laughs> <laughs> the spaceships and there is the best in the orbit, the orbit on test. 
fucking awesome. Fucking you see? awesome. I, yeah, you know, I know. Like, for those that don't know, Mike knows this. But for those that don't know, way back in the day, it's how I met Mike. I used to do a radio show. Um, we actually had several music-based podcasts. And there was a, a punk band that had a similar vibe uh, to, to this band. And it's just, I, I love it. Cause like you said, it, it's, it's kind of a lot of different genres all put together into yeah. one and they make yeah. it freaking a lot of bands try that. Yeah. And it doesn't work. Yeah. They somehow, somehow pulled it off and made it work. It, it, oh, it yeah. was well done. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and, uh, and it's, it's so, it's so crazy because this is what we've been talking about. Uh, actually uh, uh for the last hour about the the real deal if you know what i mean i mm -hmm. mean for people going in to a rehearsal space and 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 just fucking let it rip and and they being able to capture that on on a tape and and they released it and and it sounds so fresh and it's it's it, it <laughs> kicks you in the yeah. Well, you know, you know. So uh, awesome. check them out. Check them out on social media. Jurarta. That that's the English name, and in in <laughs> Swedish it's Ulrata. And they're from Malmo, Sweden. Uh, and well, take a listen to them. They're on on Spotify and and whatnot. And if you're in, in Malmo uh, around January 20th, go see this band. I've been seeing uh, some clips on YouTube, and I'm going myself, hopefully. There is another thing that I have to do that day, but still, fucking hell, I'm going to keep my eyes open for this band. So uh, give mm -hmm. them some love, hook them up, buy their stuff, and, and um, well, keeping the yeah. rock and roll or punk rock alive. There, there we go. go. That's it. There you go. And before we get away from this all girl band, mm -hmm. Mike and I have been teasing the idea of uh doing a female rock punk kind of special. It might be a documentary, it might just be a sounds on vinyl episode. We're not quite sure what we're gonna do with it, but we feel like there's a lot of great female musicians out there that really oh, don't yeah. get the credit that they deserve. And, oh, yeah. and so we want to, we want to do something to kind of put that out there. So stay tuned for that. As we kind of develop this idea a little more, we'll, we'll keep oh, you yeah. guys updated, but I'm pretty excited about this. I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, me too. Oh, it's going to be right. great. And with that, that's it. No that's more. It. That's it. We'll let you fuckers get back to whatever it is you were doing before you stopped everything you were doing to listen to the show, because I know that's what you do every week. And we thank you for giving us your ears every week to listen to this show. And uh, we really appreciate all the support. And uh, this year, as Mike said in the beginning, we're, we've got some cool stuff planned and, and brand new website. I keep talking about that. It's just it's taken longer than I, I had wanted. But, uh, yeah, lots of cool stuff in the works. And uh, so go check out the website, soundsonvinyl.com. You can listen to the episode, subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts, and uh, watch the video, too, on soundsonvinyl.com. So, yeah. That's it. That's it. All right. Later. Later. <laughs>